it's King Tuts Pro. Welcome back to another Final Cut Pro 10 tutorial. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to create a super cool uh, kind of glowing freeze frame transition with a kind of moving minute hand on the watch face in this case. So it's very quick and very easy to do. No plugins or presets are required in today's video. So if you guys are happy about that, please leave a like. That'd be awesome. And if you guys are liking these more frequent uploads, please consider subscribing and turning on the bell notification so you don't miss out on a video like this. All right, so what you wanna do first is have your video in that timeline. So the main clip on the left is the one that we're gonna be transitioning onto this clip here. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna to move to where we want the animation to begin. So I want it to start about here. So just before it starts to kind of create this crossfade transition, press Command B and delete this piece. We're gonna go a couple of frames over as well. So something like here. Press Command B, so you have a little bit of movement. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the end of this clip here, go one frame to the left. We're gonna go to Edit at the top. We're gonna click Add a Freeze Frame. Press Shift Z to see the whole timeline. And you're gonna notice that this is the last frame of this clip here. So you can see this is just a still image. I'm gonna trim this clip a little bit that. I think that's good there. So we're gonna zoom in so we can see a little bit better. We're gonna go into the effects, we're gonna to go to masks, and we're gonna hold option and drag upwards to make a duplicate of that clip. Go to the draw mask and add that on top. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a selection of the minute hand, so kind of something quick like this. Disable the bottom clip so we can see that we made the selection. Click back on this and create a feather. You can feather it outwards or feather it inwards. I'm gonna feather this outwards to maybe not too much, probably seven. Re-enable the bottom clip, select the top clip. We're gonna to go to the transform and we're gonna move this piece here over here because if we don't do that, if we go into transform and just try and rotate this, it's gonna rotate around it, which is not what we want. So we want the anchor points to be right on the center of that uh, watch face. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into the anchor point on the X axis. We're gonna click and drag this and move the Y and X values so that it matches so that it looks just like that. So this plus kind of circle is on this piece. Click and drag this and move it back in place as close as you can. And you can compare it by turning off the effects. So that's pretty close. Okay, so once you've done that, what we're gonna do is go into transform. We're gonna click on the transform button again, and we're gonna add a keyframe at the beginning. So add a keyframe here. We're gonna go about halfway, and then we're gonna type in under degrees, type in 360 and press enter. So now we can go back and we can see that it's animating. So we push play. It only goes once, so we can repeat that. So if you don't know where the keyframe is, right click on the top clip, click show video animation, and then just move the playhead right here. Then just trim this video down to there, hold option and drag it to the right, and this will replicate it again. So if I push play, it'll just keep going just like that. In this case, it's going the opposite way. I mean, depending on how we're looking at it. So we go to fit. Yeah, we want it to go this way. So in order for that to happen, we're gonna delete this one the second clip, if we move the playhead to the second to last frame. Right now it's at 347 degrees. If we type in negative 360, it'll go clockwise this time. So now if we go back, it'll play the other way, which is the way we want it to be. Cool, so once we're there, we're gonna hold option, drag the clip to the right. So now it repeats itself. So now we're gonna select both of those clips. We're gonna right click and group them. We're gonna name this watch. So once we're there, it's gonna look like this. It's like both of these clips. We're gonna right click and go to new compounds clip. We're gonna name this watch two, press enter. We're gonna go into the effects. Now we can go to the mask and add the draw mask onto that watch. We're gonna go and zoom up to 100% and we're gonna make our selection. So uh, click and drag to make your selections, something like this. And then finish it off right there. So you're gonna notice you made the selection when everything else is black. And we're gonna go back to fit and all you can see now is just this. So we're gonna hold option, drag upwards again, select the bottom clip and delete the draw mask. Now we only have this top selection. Move the plate at the beginning, go to transform, go to scale, add a keyframe there. End of that clip, go one frame to the left. Increase this to about 160% or whatever you think looks the best. So now if I push play, it'll animate just like that. Right, so once we've dragged the bottom clip here down a little bit to maybe something like this, it'll just leave a little bit behind. Now we can of course extend this one out so it matches this one a little bit better so we can delete this one if I push play. Yeah, there we go, that's a lot better. What we can do now is hold option and make three duplicates of the same clip. We're gonna select the middle clip, we're gonna go into the inspector tab over here, color inspector tab. 
Go to the exposure, drag the master all the way up until you can see a white outline on that edge. Go to saturation, bring the master all the way up. Go to color and then change this color to whatever color you think looks best. In this case, I'm gonna go with a kind of light pink and that looks pretty good. So once we are there, we're gonna go into the effects. We're gonna go into blur. We're gonna go to focus blur or we can go to Gaussian blur. If we go to Gaussian blur, it'll look something like this. Or if we go to focus blur, it'll look something like that. But you would have to go into the inspector tab, click on the focus effect and drag this back here. I'm gonna delete the focus blur and add the Gaussian blur. So I'm gonna drag Gaussian blur on the second clip. I just think it looks a little bit more interesting and just more smooth, I guess. And we're going to go into the light, go to glow and drag that in the middle clip as well. And this will create a white outline and we can, you know, decrease the amount. We don't really need it to be that strong. So maybe 30 would work. So it looks just like that. So we're going to go into light. We're going to go to streaks and add that onto the top clip. So now it's going to create a really cool lens flare. And we can click this little arrow and change the direction of this. So we're gonna change it like that so it matches the angle. Go to the streaks effect, decrease the amount because we don't really need it to be that strong. Thickness, we're gonna decrease that a little bit as well. And threshold is how strong this is going to be. As you can see, the white areas, so 0 0.8 maybe. Color, we can change this by clicking on the color box and matching it to the pinkish purple that we have. Once we have that set, we can still see the hand moving behind the lens flare, which is what we want. Go into the second clip here for the water splash effect, which is really cool. It really completes the look. So we can go into distortion, go down to water pane, which is this one. Again, no plugins are required. These are all in Final Cut Pro. They're included in Final Cut Pro. Click and drag this to the top clip. You can drag it to the top clip or if I press Command Z, you can drag it to the middle clip as well. But I personally like it on the top clip because it adds it on top of everything and it creates a different look as you can see. And once we're there, we're going to move this centerpiece about here. Water refraction, just a little bit more of, you know, a little bit more realistic. And tint color, this will change the tint color. So just keep that in mind. I mean, you wanna match it as close as you can. And that looks pretty good. So once we're there, you have tint intensity. So how strong that tint is. So if I push play from here, it's gonna look just like that, super clean. And you can do something like that with the glow. Now, if you don't want the glow, just disable it. It'll look kind of like this. Super, super cool. If you guys found this tutorial helpful at all, please leave a like. Until then, peace out, take care, and enjoy your day.